All right, let's welcome in today's guest TV and radio commentator, Ellis Hennekin. Ellis, it's great to have you with us on Friday. Hey, guys. Happy Friday to you. All right, we saved the discussion about the Democrats for you, the Democrat, uh, on our show today. There's been a lot of talk about Bernie Sanders and whether or not his supporters will come around and get behind Hillary Clinton should she go on to get the nomination during the general election. But Bernie Sanders uh, is kind of pushing his supporters mm -hmm. towards the Clinton camp uh, if he is, I mean, he's not doing it in a very overt way. Do you think, I think he even said, in fact, that it would be up to Clinton to convince them right. uh, to, to bring him around to her side. What do you think Bernie Sanders is willing to do? How far is he willing to go uh, if he, when and if he bows out of the race? Well, I think it's a gradual process, John. I, you know, these things are, they're slow in coming. First of all, there's a huge amount of emotion here, right? I mean, Sanders wor has worked very, very hard, surprised a lot of people with how well he did. He has some passionate supporters out there. So he's got to kind of, you know, ease them in that direction. Maybe the same way Hillary did toward Obama. They were hard feelings at first, but eventually Bernie, I think, will come to recognize that, you know what, the issues that I care about, that my people care about, are a whole lot better served with Hillary than they would be with a, a Trump candidacy. Yeah, I also want to get your opinion there. Do you think that he is just kind of holding out at this point in hopes that Hillary will kind of continue to further move herself to the left on issues like breaking up the banks and free college tuition? Is that really what he's holding on to, hoping that she'll do that before he actually bows out? Yeah, good point. I think that's part of it, right? I mean, these are issues that he cares an awful lot about and the, and the future of the party, what the Democrats really are going to represent for a generation to come. Boy, that's a hugely important issue, and I, yeah, I, and I think he's doing it effectively. He is easing her a little bit more in the progressive direction. You know, she is fairly moderate on a lot of that stuff. Uh, let's talk about something that Jane Sanders mm -hmm. recently said about Hillary Clinton. We have a soundbite here. Let's go ahead and play that, Ellis, because I want to get your reaction. Let's take a listen. It's right. an FBI investigation. We want to let it go through without politicizing it, and then we'll find out what the situation is. Um, and that's how we still feel. I mean, it would be nice if the FBI moved it along. It would be nice if the FBI moved it along. I think that is mm. politicizing a little, a maybe, little bit. Maybe just a tad. And Alice, to go back yeah. to one thing that you said, trying to draw the comparison between Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton in 2008, there's one significant difference here. That's Bernie Sanders is not a Democrat. <laughs> Well, that's, that's technically true, but, you know, I mean, this lineup of American politics where there really are only two teams, he's, he's more of a Democrat than he is anything else, right? Well, ask his supporters, because uh, <laughs> yeah. Miranda wants to talk about this next point. Yeah, I do. Um, there's an article in The Hill that says Hillary Clinton can no longer negotiate with Bernie Sanders over policy. Here's a quote from the article. Clinton supporters argue the former Secretary of State has already been forced to the left by Sanders and can't risk moving further ahead of a general election. Ellis, Hillary Clinton, now she's come out, says that she now opposes trans-Pacific partnership and would support a $15 mm -hmm. dollar minimum mm -hmm. wage if Congress were to pass one. Yep. And we talked about some of these issues that a lot of people love about Bernie Sanders, you know, free college tuition and whatnot. But isn't it going to be difficult for Hillary to move any further to the left when it comes to a general election to, to win over those independent voters? Well, I've got to give you a nuanced answer on that because it, okay. it isn't black or white. Uh, um, you know, there are, she's never going to be Bernie Sanders, right? She's not right. going to come that far, but she's, but she's likely to move a little bit. I mean, this is the, the normal tussle that goes on uh, prior to a, a convention. Well, you know, the party has to decide what it stands for, even beyond the candidates. It's, frankly, it's going to be a whole lot more fun on the other side, where we're going to try and resolve a whole bunch of deep, deep contradictions than these kind of subtle differences in the Dems. But, but, but you're right, there's some there as well. Uh, there is also some discussion about how the Trump campaign now might be trying to target some of Bernie Sanders supporters. Mm -hmm. Drawing the parallel, again, you, know, you, you, you think there's going to be some fun on the Republican side, but there could be some switchovers here. Both, we talked to a guest the other day. We did. Right? We had a caller on the show the other day who said be. that they might, you know, they're leaning towards Bernie Sanders right now, but if he doesn't get the nomination for the Democratic Party, he's going to vote for Donald Trump. And it's shocking almost sometimes how much you hear that uh, from some of Bernie Sanders supporters. How big of a problem is that for the Clinton campaign? Yeah, it, it's kind of irrational, right? I mean, the kind of person who really thought about what Donald would do compared to what Bernie would do, I, you know, they play to the same kind of anxieties, I suppose, but their, their prescriptions are, are so different. I mean, I, it's hard to imagine that you would want a candidate who would push America in both of those 
directions. But listen, it's a crazy year. I'm sure yeah. there's some yeah. folks like that, just just plain old mad, right? Well, just, these are those, I'm just yeah, mad. These are the folks that are, I don't think they're too concerned about the specifics of the policy prescriptions. They just want something other than the status quo, right. the Washington insiders, yeah. the Hillary Clintons, the John Boehners, the Paul Ryans, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. Could, listen, there could, there could be some of that. But, you know, history teaches us that in the end, mostly people kind of come back to where they began. The, the so-called independents really mostly either lean right or they lean left. And, you know, we're a very tribal people. And in the end, we pretty much come back to our own. Most Speak for yourself, time. Ellis, about the tribal issue. Just kidding. <laughs> Stick around. We've got more to come. Ellis is going to be with us for the next block as well. And coming up, we'll talk to Ellis about the new Ronald Reagan movie and why actor Will Ferrell is now backing out of playing the former president. Details just ahead when Newsmax Now continues. And welcome back to Newsmax. Now, topping your headlines today, the U.S. Supreme Court de declines to block a Texas voter ID law. The Texas measure requires voters to present a photo ID like a driver's license, passport, military ID card, or concealed carry license. Opponents argue that the law disproportionately affects older and poor voters, including minorities. The fight is not over yet, though. The New Orleans Circuit Court will hear the case at the end of next May if the lower court does not act by July 20th. Then opponents could renew their application to block the law ahead of the elections in November. This will be an issue. Millions of dollars lost because of what was posted on social media. Former Ole Miss football player Laramie Tunsil saw his draft stock slip after this video was leaked out on his Twitter account just before the NFL draft. The problems did not stop there. His Instagram account was also hacked and it appears to be a text conversation between Tunsil and Old Miss coach Hugh Freeze showing possible NCAA violations about player payment. Tunsil later admitted to the violation during a press conference after he was drafted. So, was there an exchange between you and your coach with money? I have to say, yeah. He's got no more comments. Sorry. Well, that's when the press conference was abruptly ended. Tunsil was then escorted off the stage. We'll hear more about that, I'm sure. Two pro-life activists arrested in connection with making undercover Planned Parenthood videos say they are going to say no to a plea deal that would give them probation. An attorney for Sandra Merritt said his client will not accept responsibility for any wrongdoing. David Deladian had previously rejected the offer. Both Deladian and Merritt face a felony charge for allegedly using fake driver's licenses to conceal their identities while dealing with Planned Parenthood. That is the roar of a towering inferno after a natural gas pipeline exploded in Pennsylvania early this morning. The Pittsburgh Post-Gazette reported that at least one person was injured. The fireball destroyed several homes, went 100 feet in the air and damaged at least three properties nearby as well. The pipeline was shut off and the fire brought under control within an hour, but residual gas is expected to burn for hours. Side. Now let's talk more about a new film that's scheduled to come out about President Ronald Reagan's battle with Alzheimer's disease. According to the New York Post, actor Will Ferrell, who was supposed to star as the late president, has now backed out of that film. Ferrell's spokesperson says the actor decided to pass on the project, even though it's not an Alzheimer's comedy, as some have said. According to the spokesperson, this comes after Ferrell and the movie faced intense backlash from Reagan's supporters as well as family members. Reagan's daughter, Patty Davis, published a letter yesterday in the Daily Beast where she detailed the pain both Reagan and his family felt as he slowly lost his memories. Meanwhile, Michael Reagan, a frequent guest seen here on Newsmax TV, tweeted this message yesterday. Alzheimer's is not a comedy. It robs you, then it kills you. Let's welcome back in today's guest, TV and radio commentator, Ellis Hennigan. Ellican, thanks for sticking around. Uh, we know when we planned this segment earlier today, it was still up in the air as to whether or not Will Ferrell was going to push ahead with this project. He's also one of the producers. Uh, did he make the right decision pulling the plug on it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Listen, anytime all of those Reagan children can agree with each other about anything, you know they probably have a pretty good point, right? Uh, I mean, it's, listen, you know, I'm not someone who's easily offended. I, I'm not someone who has a very delicate needle about stuff, but, you know, turning Alzheimer's, the tragedy of Alzheimer's into a lighthearted comedy, I just, I don't know, it just seems kind of low rent to me. I'm glad, I'm glad Will pulled the plug on it. 
Yeah, I mean, I had to look a couple of times and said, this this can't be a comedy, right? I we mean, had this, this debate in the newsroom yesterday when we first heard about this. Uh, and it the was a comedy, person, dark yeah. comedy, a drama, whatever. But uh, there's, no, there's nothing funny. About Either this. way, I just, I, I, yeah. I don't get it. I really don't. I'm, I'm sitting there like yeah, Listen, I I, it is important sometime in life to be able to joke about tough stuff. But right. I don't know. To me, to me, this is just, uh, I, I'm glad it's not going to happen. Well, you know, I wonder if the film still is going to happen, though, because it just says that he's backing out. So we don't really know. Yeah, I did. I did see that. I know that's exactly how I was worded. But but I got to tell you, I, I mean, listen, you can't stop some little person somewhere from making a movie about something. But uh, but if the big star and the big financing and, you know, no big studio is going to do it. So I, it's either not going to happen or it's going to happen on such a such a tiny level. It will have no impact. You know, these uh, types of films, I, you know, I, I am shocked it even got to this point. Somebody had given it a green light. Somebody even wrote a script about it? Well, and not it, even wrote a script. I mean, you can write a script about anything, but that it got to the point where it was <coughs> kind of in progress, even. Right. Um, well, supposedly, he was going to yeah. be a some producer. Point, at some point, Will, right, I mean, at some point, he agreed to do it. You wonder what he was thinking or... I, I don't know. Listen, the, the, the bottom line is that, is that uh, I think the Reagan family, like I say, all of the kids uh, expressing their own uh, frustration and, you know, uh, being outraged about it. And, and I think it had some impact. Now, you know, the, obviously when you're dealing with President Reagan in, in an election year and a movie, it can get political. Will Ferrell, I can't remember who he's supporting anymore. One time it was Hillary Clinton, then I heard it was Bernie Sanders, then maybe back to Hillary Clinton again. Do you think he had uh, anything political in mind uh, by putting this movie out there? If nothing else, then to kind of make fun of these Republicans who worship Reagan so highly. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I mean, I'm not big on looking into people's hearts or those kinds of things, John. I, I don't see any evidence. It just seemed like a stupid idea that finally when a light was shined on it to, to everyone who looked, it said, listen, this is just... This is just tacky. Why don't we not do this? Let's, let's, let's go find something else to joke about. What do you say? Yeah, according to the Variety article, I mean, I kind of read a, like, read a little synopsis on it. Like, it was talking about that it was supposed to be Reagan in his second term. And it was, you know, it was an intern. Yeah, it was an intern or who something. was convincing Ronald Reagan or, or helping him was, continue the belief that he was an actor playing the role of a president. President, because that's when Alzheimer's supposedly mm -hmm. kicked in. But there's been a lot of debates on that. I'm curious, uh, Alice, as a Democrat, when you hear these debates on whether or not, you know, President Reagan was suffering from Alzheimer's while he was serving as president, w what are your thoughts on that? I mean, is, is that a debate that well, should just yeah. end? No, it's, it's absolutely a legitimate thing to discuss, and I don't think we have to limit it to the presidency. Right. But truly, Miranda, I'm convinced that the issue of aging relatives and older folks that we care about really is one of the great social issues of the new millennium. Right? Agreed. Almost every 100%. family, including mine, and I bet you yours as well, there's you know some relative we're worried about. Uh, Dad, Dad, give me the car keys. You can't be driving anymore. Right. How are we going to pay for it? Where are they going to live? You know, what kind of care is appropriate? I mean, these are these are big and troubling issues, and we absolutely need to be talking about them, not just in politics, but but in our lives. And, and so, hey, maybe if this controversy generates some dinnertime uh, conversation, maybe it's uh, it's had a good result as well. Yeah, maybe we did that right now. That'd be really nice. If maybe we that's did. what Will Ferrell was hoping to do, but just didn't think it through all the way. Yeah, and I do like Will nah, Ferrell. Maybe. I do. I, I like a lot of his comedies, but maybe this one, so this much. this was a smart decision. Well, Alice Hennigan, yeah. thanks for being with us. Yeah. As always, great to see you. Enjoy great your weekend. to be with you guys. Have a great weekend. Yeah. Coming up next here on Newsmax Now, thanks to Obamacare, our insurance premiums may be going up big time. Find out how much. And if you or someone you know is 66 or older, listen up. Today's the last day to take advantage of a popular loophole that's boosted Social Security benefits for many seniors.